Some of y'all don't even know Alchemist is Alchemist is a man who named dilated peoples. That's how far we go back. Straight up. Yo, we're gonna take it back. Enzo, go back. Let's rock, we're gonna rock this last. This is the dirty underground shit that started it all off for us. It goes, I work the angle, sharp and precise. Dilated people, so you better build twice. Make some noise for DJ Bell. Oh yeah, baby, it's the B-Side Show. You know what time it is. We're here at Rhymefest. Check it out. None other than Coyote. We got it, baby. Oh. The sensational rap duel. Let's check. How you feeling today? I'm feeling terrible. I had a long night. I'm tired as fuck, and I'm ready to black out. Same. There you go. There you go. Check it out. We're in LA. This is home. The Coliseum, you know. How's the energy? How You know, what's going through your mind? I mean, the energy is fucking great. Uh, like I said, I'm ready to black out, drink, and mosh pit, and just go crazy, man. I'm excited to perform in front of uh, all these people. And the Coliseum is one of the most legendary places in L.A., so it's going to be fucking dope. Yes, sir. Yeah, so y'all been traveling. Uh, I want to know what's, you know, some of your favorite cities to perform in. Favorite cities to perform in? Of course, Los Angeles, the land, man. This is the home hometown. Um, that'll be at the top of the list. But, you know, we've been all over the world and shit, so I would say... I really enjoyed Amsterdam, you know what I'm saying? They had a, the coffee shops out there. That was fucking fire. And Budapest. Budapest has some good-ass fucking uh, buildings. Like, felt like you stepped into medieval times and shit. Yeah. Nice. What about you? Any favorites? Um, Germany was fucking super dope. Um, I don't remember shit about Germany, but I remember the show was fucking crazy. They're one of the few cities that learned our lyrics back then, whenever it was. The song wasn't out, and we played it. By the second time the hook came, the whole crowd was singing it. So Germany was dope. But I'll say my best, my favorite city is still L.A., though, to That's perform right, it. That's baby. L.A. all day. You guys are so expressive. I'm loving the fit. Um, who comes up with the color scheme, you know, the you know what you guys are rocking? You guys have, have, have a team behind you, or is it one of you? It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's just me and him. There's no team. We just kind of see each other every day unfortunately you know but uh yeah we just come together and just i don't know how the fuck we got here to be honest but we're here i think before we went on tour like it was for f like 50 dates so we we're like bro we can't take that many outfits i remember we we're at the surplus and we we're like what if we just wear jumpsuits and, and like you know and we're, we were fans of like eminem and like performative guys even on stage where they take they're not just there as themselves as a version of yourself. So these are like the characters. So we showed up in Europe as the characters, Coyote, and we didn't want to take that many outfits. Right. So it was like a... Because when you're on tour, you fucking unpacking and unpacking, and you got all these fucking outfits. You got to pack for like 40 days and shit. You got to think smarter, not harder, you stupid ass motherfuckers. And also we had did a video uh, called Fuck the Wall, and that's the first time we had jumpsuits and masks. And we're like, ah, we could probably use this on tour and it'll be like our, our, our running bit kind of thing. That's right. That's right. I want to talk about it. Mexicanos are in the house, baby. Uh, what part of Mexico? Mazatlani, Guadalajara. Mazatlani, Guadalajara. We're in here. Um, what does it mean to you to put, to put on for your people, for La Raza? I mean, it means everything, really, because growing up, for, for me and bro and, and a lot of people like us, there was no uh, representation as far as we seen it when it when it came to like mainstream media and stuff and just television and whenever we were on tv we felt like we weren't portrayed the way we see ourselves kind of and we're just doing it the way we see it and trying to rep the right way you know what i'm saying and when people come up to us and tell us like hey man you guys are really showing us and the way we're supposed to be represented it really means everything for real yeah mm -hmm. I agree. Like I said, there was little to no representation. There was some, though. I'll give a shout-out to Selena, shout-out to Cypress Hill, uh, Big Pun, and a few others, man, George Lopez and shit like that. But in the grand scheme of things, like, we rarely saw ourselves, especially, like, in the hip-hop space or even in American culture in general. We are kind of always, like, the stepchildren or uh, we kind of seemed like other 
Uh, but it's like, nah, man, we're whipping our dick out. Like, we're just as American as everybody. We're just as cool as everybody. And, you know, Mexican-American culture is a beautiful culture. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to put that in the forefront. Uh, and, of course, it's hip-hop at the end of the day. So it's like the two are marrying in a perfect way. It's Mexican-American culture and hip-hop in the most beautiful way imaginable. We appreciate that. We love it. Um, you know what? To me, it goes one or the other way. It's either it happened overnight or, damn, it finally happened. How do you feel? Uh, shit, it might seem like it happened overnight, but, man, this is like been years in the making and just all in God's time, for real. You know what I mean? And just kind of just sticking to it and not giving up and not quitting. And, and, and now it's all coming full circle and shit. And this is all this is all the fuck we know how to do, man. It's fucking rap and dress fly as fuck. That's right. That's yeah, right. we've been doing it for so long that it, it doesn't feel like, damn, it finally happened yet either. It kind of feels like we don't really focus on on that, whether it's happening or happened, or we kind of take each moment uh, by, by as it comes and we leave it there. Like if we have a cool moment, we'll be like, damn, that was dope. But to, but tomorrow we're like, I. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like we don't bask in like the victories nor the failures. We push it forward because my mom is still working, my my fucking girl's still working, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? If there's a day everyone could retire and shit, that's when I'll be like, damn, we did that. You know what I'm saying? That's right. It's the B side show. Any shout outs? Any shout outs at the rank fest? Shout out to the B side show, Ooh. man. Yes, sir, like you said, shout out to everyone rock, rocking with the Yodis too, man. Everybody, you know who we are. We love y'all. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, what up, family? We're here at the Rhyme Fest 2024 in the LA Coliseum, rocking live and direct. We got the one and only legendary DJ Babu. What's up, man? How you feeling? I'm great, great. What's up, Lumen? Good, brother. Just happy to be here. Honored to have you, man. I know you guys just finished rocking the stage, man, for Rhyme Fest. How was that feeling, rocking at the Coliseum? Oh, it was beautiful, man. Um, I think the last time I've been to the Coliseum was when we shot our first album cover. Like we did right. print, we did press photos right in front of the Coliseum and inside the Coliseum for our first album, uh, the, platform, the, um, the platform. So it was like, it felt really good to be back in this context to perform here in, in our hometown. It was amazing. Definitely, man. And I feel like you guys violated people. You guys are Los Angeles natives, so that's really cool. You guys were out here headlining the show for the massive branding in your hometown. You know what yep. I'm saying? I know you're originally from Cerritos. Uh, right, Cerritos. Uh, the, 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 ju the, the junkies, junkies are the, ju the junkies. I got originated in Cerritos. Cool, man. And you were from originally from. I, I'm I'm originally from uh, Camarillo and Oxnard, but I moved around a lot until I got to Southern California in '84, where I ended up in Oxnard for a while, and then I ended up staying in Camarillo, and then um, in my later years I moved. Right on, brother. I remember being young, and I believe you used to work at the Fat Beats on Vermont once in a while. I used to go count some records, man. Yeah. What made that move down here, and how did you get to work at Fat Beats? Uh, it, was, it was really through me just networking through my DJ, you know, the Fat Beats. Um, you know, when I went to go to my first USA DMC in New York, I um, went to this, this little record store called Fat Beats. Yeah. And um, I walked in and I met my, my future boss and my dear friend, DJ Jab, um, owner and founder of Fat Beats, and I made a good connection with him there when I was in New York battling um, on my back home after the battle, and six months later I get a call from Joe, he's like, hey man, I'm getting ready to open up a Los Angeles branch of Fat Beats, and I don't really know too many people out there, but me and you clicked, and you know, a few months later I moved to LA, I'm Fat Beats along with my homeboy Marvski was a Marvel, you know, so, 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 so,
the whole independent thing that was happening at the time, you know, so it wouldn't be weird for, you know, uh, people in the scene to come by. Um, and Evan Rock were doing the, just that. They were making the first 12 inches. They were literally pressing them at Rainbow Records from Santa Monica, driving across town and leaving them on consignment at the store with us. Wow. And so, you know, at the same time, I was DJing on the radio, on Soul Assassin's Radio, on the beat. And now they're smoking on the underground hip hop on Friday nights. And, you know, I was a big fan of Dilated. You know, I met Rock through a mutual friend. Um, and then a few months later, he was telling me about his rap group, the Island People, so he wanted me to be his partner evidence. And a few months later, I go to the Beat Boy Summit and meet evidence. And we hit it off. And, you know, it started with me doing a couple shows, doing some scratch in the studio, and it just snowballed into eventually me becoming a third part of the island. So, like, you know, that was a reoccurring thing like, early on with them going to the store. And that was, you know, one of the ways that I would keep in touch with them. And, um, you know, they, they definitely heard about me. And, uh, Impact I was making on the scene and stuff too. So um, here we are, 20, 30, some odd years later. Amazing. Was my brother. It's, it's so amazing, and, and I'm honored. I think all of us are to see you guys rock, man. And like, you know, in hip hop, I feel like you know the longevity of the group. Sometimes you see it fall out. Sometimes, but you guys have been consistent, man. Like. Each no. album you drop, you guys got something to say. Yes. I think you represent all sound in the right way. The cuts you always put on on their tracks, man, it's like beyond amazing. I mean, I feel like you have an overall DJ, like, like that you run the radio. You made the best, like, at your battles and all that. But it's like, I mean, what pushed you to that, like, to do everything, like you said, like, you're always going to everything, go all out. I just generally love all those things. All right, man. Whoa, we're here, man. B-Side Show, and man, okay. this OG no, needs no introduction right here, man. We're at Rhyme Fest, man. Go ahead and let him know. Okay. <laughs> What's oh, up? Yeah. It's your homegirl, Kool-Aid. I love my B-Side fam. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. You have no idea. So that my first exposure was when one of your hosts sent me when you guys had Chino on and oh, sent yeah. it to me. And uh, I, I love the love my boy Chino gave me. That was like my yeah, family. Yeah. And then fast forward, I never knew how much that would mean to me, what you guys captured. So... Yeah. It really inspires me to be back out here because it's like there's so much history now captured and there's so I mean it's beautiful like the book of life you can go back now and see every chapter and you guys are part of that yes and I just want to say uh, you know part of our inspiration for doing that was from what you were doing like that inspired us man we, we were man we, we used to listen to th those were the times where we could really listen to the radio and we had some shit going on and you you like really brought that out and that's what we wanted to keep going is just you know uh, representing and exposing like people that maybe you know not everybody might have heard before people like people like here like namik and all you know vel and all these people you know what i'm any saying any avenue like, when i was on the radio that i could yeah. do that i would try to do it now it's funny because it doesn't matter because now it's like what i love is that nobody can make or break you you're you can only yeah. make or break yourself your personality your spirit your yeah. work ethic because yeah. there's so many platforms and it's just such a powerful environment we're in and then there's no rules too i love it i don't know if you've been following oh, my boy yeah. demiza but he's having oh, yeah for sure he's for having sure. fun setting it on fire yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're about to have some yeah. real fun loud records you heard yeah. they relaunched yeah. so that's it's right. it's it's about to be a sick new era yeah, out no, here no, no. a sick new old school era that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying because like dude i've been following a lot of what he's saying and, and he and he's always spot on and he's actually you know we've been blessed to have him on the b-side show and it's probably okay. like maybe five or six i don't remember how long no, ago I'm jealous. I'm but, but but no you got to come through okay. for sure we got to we got to but how are you feeling about this whole lineup today, Rhyme Fest at are the Coliseum? Are you kidding, man? I mean, you couldn't have two better women in hip hop than oh, my shit. girl Vel, my girl Rev. Um, I'm loving the Coyote right oh, now. Yeah. It's like, and I, 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 did I miss them? Because I'm gonna beat somebody up did if I miss them. Did you see Rock out there? Really? No, oh, she killed it. No, too. She, that's another female that's like. And hey, then I absolutely Mr. Chalk. You know, gotta oh, catch yeah. his set. We caught some of and them over there. Yeah. Of course, be yeah. real. Are you kidding? That legend, yeah. like yeah. that dude. I. It's so neat to watch him grow and build out everything he spills out decades. De like, always comes with some new shit. I love that. Oh, and um, Doobie, I mean, there's, oh, there's some good yeah. stuff. And then my son, Surrealist, he grew up listening to Atmosphere. So that's going to be cool to... Yeah. I, we'd bump it on the way to school. So I'm going to enjoy that set with Surrealist and Bell. That's a trip because he's, he's your son. And I was just talking to him. He works also with my stepson, Eternal. Crazy. So we're like so he, he yeah he, he's yeah we're he's so doing some shit with him so yeah that's how I know a lot about surrealist too that's what's up man we're awful yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah, oh yeah. you know what B side yeah, yeah. your girl Kool Aid you know how we do baby yeah, repping yeah, that's right man thank you so much for coming through man it's Ryan Fest B side man thank you all man let's go.
What's good? It's your girl Fallacy. We're here at Rhymefest, baby. You already know LA all day. We're here with a legend. Baby, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. I have a couple questions. So when you're on stage rocking, what is it that's going through your mind? Uh, I'm just in it, you know, honestly, but just connecting as much as possible to the people in the audience because I'm not talking at them. I'm talking to them. So in whatever way I can like relate my lyrics to, you know, that woman over there or that dude in the back that's vibing with me, that's that's what I'm what my mind is focused on because we're creating an experience together. Right. I love that you say relate because you are one to be very open and allow your audience to, you know, see the beautiful and the ugly, right? So um, being in the industry for so long, what does it mean to you to, you know, protect our queens, our women, you know, in the industry? Um, it's so important as someone who has seen so much and had to fight for my space and my relevance and for my voice to be heard. I understand how important solidarity is and also being um, supportive. You know what I mean? Building community, finding those women that don't get all the press in the pub and, and finding these dope women that I've seen. I find, you know, women every day, dope MCs on social media that don't necessarily get the shine. But like, it's important for us to highlight them and like, push them forward because what are we doing if we're not pulling another sis up you know right that's beautiful i want to talk about talk to be nice because the visuals are amazing let's talk about how that came about and um just the thoughtfulness behind it because i know that it takes a big production you know you have a big team behind you to be able to you know do something of that project that that um that big so let's talk about it yeah so talk to me nice um instantly when i heard the beat so messiah did the beat um, it, I love when something is just like immediately catches me, had that New York vibe, like I started bobbing my head, head immediately. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna talk my shit on this, right? right? So I knew that I wanted to incorporate um, a really artsy kind of feel to it that was kind of moody and dark. So I'm a real, real big fan of Storyboard P, who's um, an amazing dancer out of New York. So I knew I wanted to get him. David Maxwell did um, the video treatment, so, so he had this big vision. My dudes from Art Comes First, they're international, but they were in New York at the time. They're stylists, you know, just right. had that real, like, um, edgy kind of style. Right. I think that mirrored, like, the sound of the track. Um, so I think that we wanted to capture the feeling of what it is, like, you know, demanding that you are going to respect us and approach us right. in this particular way, you know? So it came together like really beautifully and I'm happy. Yeah, we are too. Thank you for allowing us to see that. Um, last question. I know you got uh, the song Forever Placed uh, at, on a show. So how does that feel, you know, to be able to um, showcase differently? It's really dope, you know, especially since I'm a fan of the shy. Um, and it goes to show that, you know, you're in your head a lot. I mean, it's done really well over the years, but like, getting that kind of mainstream kind of nod on a show like that it kind of just gives you that kind of confirmation that you are in the right place and the music that you're putting out is going to reach as many people as it should so it's really really dope especially since in that particular scene jacob Lattimore, he when i was in atlanta like just starting he was heavy on the dance scene in atlanta for the young cat so I was like this is like perfect you know full circle full circle moment awesome. so it's just really beautiful so shout out to the shot yay thank you so much is the b-side show you heard it here rhyme fest baby we're here hey what's up everybody b-side show check it out man dj clips right here with my man right here dj newmark what's up newmark how's it going how's your day going oh man it's beautiful i saw you cut it up just earlier up there on the stage man the music selection that you were going through it was beautiful man, beautiful i had a good time it's good to be here the crowd was pumped up it was good to grab real special clips for today like run dmc's roam all over coliseum floors Ooh, that shit got me hype on the way over here i'm like oh i got some goodies for them so i got excited today that's what's up bro you know that that's one thing i love about you bro like you your your way of djing is just like i've looked at you since i was i want to say early 2000 that's when i caught on to you um one of your tracks that i scratch on just to mess around on is um zodiac oh yeah 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 that with, beat. with method man yes that yeah. beat that beat is oh my god you just you put it on you just 
automatic. You just want to start. Yeah, it is it a up. good one to cut to, isn't it? Yes, yeah. beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So what we, we went through with it with that beat and everything? Like, how did everything come through with that? <clears throat> I was doing a, a series on my Facebook or on my social media uh, called Zodiac Tracks, where I would honor as many artists' birthdays in one five to seven minute mix using all vinyl. So, like, if we were in the month of June, I'd I'd you know be playing you know Lauryn Hill and you know Pete Rock because they're Gemini's you know like so I would mix all their all the artists in the designated sign so I got to the end of the series which was two years worth and I was like I need to do a song to honor it so I wanted to do something called Zodiac Killer and I was working with Method Man on a um, on a show called uh, Drop the Mic which was a comedy um, and he. he he was down to get down on it, and there it is. Me and Meth did a song together. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, man. I don't want to waste any more time with you. I know you had a long day today, but um, to all our viewers out there, how do you, where do you see hip-hop going in the direction that it's going so far, what you've seen today? You see this expanding some more now? <clears throat> I'm really bad at predicting the future, man. You know, I stopped trying to read minds in my 20s. People are crazy. <laughs> they really are. They're fucking nuts, man. Uh, but, you know, I'm seeing a lot of growth in production, music production, and uh, I think that's going to carry us through the next 10 years. 10 years. I agree. Yeah. I agree. All right, man. Well, DJ Eclipse, B-Side Show, DJ Newmark. One well, love. Thanks for having me. Got it. B-Side Show, man. Shay, why do you do it? Go ahead and let them know who you, where you're at and where we're at right now, bro. What's up? This is Demrick. We have Ron Fest LA. Dope as shit. Underground hip hop, real LA hip hop festival, man. This there's never been nothing like this. This shit's fucking amazing. Happy to be here. Yeah. How does it feel? Historic LA Coliseum, brother. I mean that's that hip hop shit, man, and it feels good to be able to be a part of it. You know the legacy of LA. This is that real LA shit. You yeah, know what it right, is. Man. That's right, man. Thank you, dog. And we're gonna fucking catch your performance, dog. It's always good seeing you, man. Thank you, dog. Yeah, hell yeah. That's right. B-side radio, homie. Tap in for the win. Ooh wee. Thank you, celebrating his 17th anniversary for for the debut album. Exile got countless classics. You know what I'm saying? We say so we celebrate multiple anniversaries for this brother. You know, and um, so yeah, it just feels good to be back with the fam, man. You know. Hey, man. 
All right, man, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I know you guys are busy today, man. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Yo, what's up? This is Fashion. Exile. BLU. And you rocking with B-Size.net? Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? This is Exile. And you're listening to the B-Side Show. Yo, what's up? This is Fashion. You rocking with the B-Side Show. Not the A-Side, you bitch. <laughs> Big BLU holding it down for the B side show. Peace. What the fuck? Oh, oh. Hands up. Yo, I work the angle, sharp and precise. Dilated people, so you better build twice. Act like no.